So with the coronavirus raging on, a lot of people are spending more time indoors, watching Netflix and doing things like that when, you know, they can't go out. So I thought I would start providing some content as well. Today, I wanna to talk about a study from half a century ago, a little over that. You can see it right there. So this was actually an adaptation of an ongoing experiment that some researchers were doing. And they were studying how long rats could go if they were swimming for their life. I will preface this, this was done prior to medical ethics become a normative thing. So they do end up killing the lab rats in this experiment. They got made these jars, filled them up with water, and then they dropped these rats in there and they timed how long these rats could survive swimming to stay afloat. With cold temperatures or hot temperatures, the rats could swim for uh, just a very brief period of time. But with that middle range of temperatures, as seen here, those rats actually swam for a, a decent period of time. But there was a problem with this. All of those data points were actually corrupted because some of those rats would only swim for a couple minutes and then just go. And this is what made the researchers start to question that phenomenon of psychogenic death I was just telling you about. These rats believed it was futile, and so they died of their own choice, psychogenically. And they started to observe this in different tribes around the world, as well as soldiers on the battlefield in World War I and World War II. Think about this. Rats are accustomed to being put in weird situations, like a maze, wandering around. Maybe they find food, maybe they don't. And then at the end of the day, they're put in a cage, given some food and water, and the lights turn off and the researchers go home for the night. Lab rats have been trained with hope because they know no matter what weird situation they're in, they're gonna be taken out, given food, given the night to sleep. So researchers performed this experiment where they timed how long these lab rats could swim, and then they went out and they actually captured a bunch of street rats. These were Norwegian street rats or something like that. And they went out and captured them, brought them into the lab, and then they dropped them in these containers. On the chart I showed you earlier, those rats swam for 60 to 80 hours. These wild rats, those rats, all of them, swam for 10 to 15 minutes. These wild rats, they had never experienced the phenomenon of being put in a weird situation and then taken back out. They psychogenically died. They gave up. They died from hopelessness. Then the researchers wanted to see if you could train it. How am I gonna train these rats? How am I gonna teach them hope? They went out, captured another round of wild rats. But here's what they did. They accustomed them to the experiment. They would take them out of their cage, run them through a setup procedure where you hold them, you clamp, you hold them down, you can carry them to the water, you dip them in the water, you take them back out, they're fine. After a little while, they took these rats and they dropped them in the jars. These rats swam for 60 to 80 hours, just like the original group. And that goes to show the power of hope and its impact on one's ability to actually live, like literally your ability to live can be influenced by your degree of hope. Now put that into context, apply that into the real world. You've seen this before. People who believe in a higher power live a lot longer. People who believe they're going to be rescued, say their boat capsizes in the middle of the ocean. Those people survive because they believe the Coast Guard is on their way. They believe there's a ship nearby. The power of belief keeps people alive. Now extrapolate this to the current situation. A lot of people think the world is in this big disastrous mess right now. There are many things that are working differently or paused or frozen or on hold. And a lot of people are worried about stuff. If you approach this as an event where, okay, things are gonna get tough, let's adapt, Let's survive because I know it's going to get better soon. All of a sudden, you're getting really thrifty, you're getting really creative, and you're innovating. One, you're much more likely to endure, and then two, as you come out of this, as times start to get good again, you are much more likely to not only survive, but thrive better than you did prior to this event because you innovated. So in this context, hope is not a life or death situation, but it is a determining factor to how much you thrive at the end of this. If you have a survival-based mindset and you're approaching this situation, this economic crisis as, okay, I have to survive, you're not going to adapt as much. You're not going to innovate as much. So when you get out of this, you're going to struggle just as much as you did beforehand. But if you innovate, if you work hard, if you have that confidence that you know things are going to get better at some point soon, you will progress and thrive much more than you ever expected in this situation. That's all I got. Um, this is definitely the first video of a series. I've been putting this off for about a month, but I'm gonna keep teaching things like this. If you'd like to hear more, click that subscribe button. It's somewhere over there. Like and share this video and comment below 
anything you've ever wanted to know. Quantum physics, zoonotic diseases like what's currently going on, home construction, anything you've ever wanted to know, comment below and I will see what I can do. And with that, I'll see you next time.